always wear a black t-shirt. Product management. The Jedi of the tech world. And if you want to be a good product manager, you need to be innovative. Carnegie Mellon actually spells it out in four different frameworks. These are mindsets that you can adopt as a product manager that will keep you innovative. The first, iteration. You go from, I think this is a good idea, sketch it out, conceptualize it, do it again, rework it, go over and over and over until you've actually worked out the kinks. Iteration, the mindset you should adopt. Second, inquire. You should ask a bunch of questions. Embrace the unknown. Turn your questions into assumptions and then test those assumptions. Let curiosity be your guide. Three, divergent and convergent. What I mean by this mindset is that if you're starting something, there's a lot of different routes you can take. Throw them all down. Put them on a piece of paper. Put them out there. Get them out there. Write them down. Once you've written them down, then focus it back in. Once you have a focus, make sure that you're not making any assumptions, then throw it back out and get it really broad again. And then focus back in. Fourth mindset you need to adopt is a bias of action. A product manager's job is very confusing. There's so many different questions that they need to address and different ways of looking at things that it can get a little bit overwhelming. Tony Stark in Iron Man actually used an example where the robot was telling him, hey, maybe you need to test before you fly. And he had the Iron Man suit and he was ready to go. And he says, Jarvis, sometimes you gotta run before you can walk. It's kind of the same concept. It's, it's a bias towards action. We don't know all of the problems, but we need to get something moving because it'll give us a framework for us to work within. It gives us a direction. It gives the entire team an understanding as to where's the innovation being taken place. It lowers all of those questions towards somewhere to build on. It's a constraint that you're working within. So the bias towards action is going to be saying, I want a prototype. I need to move on this. Let's call those people. And once the ball's rolling, that momentum will carry that team forward. And then you can put those other mindsets. You can iterate on it and inquire, diverge and converge. That is what keeps you narrow, keep you focused and keeps you innovative. Let's talk about a cool bias to action example. One of my favorite movies is Apollo 13. And everyone knows the story. They get up to space and then there's an explosion. Their oxygen tanks are being depleted. They don't have oxygen, they're dead. We gotta find a way to make this fit into the hole for this using nothing but that. So they had to take a bias towards action. They had to prototype, they had to make it. They didn't have time to think. Realistically, that team, if they would have thought and analyzed it, would have killed the astronauts in the end. If I could take the analogy of moving in a vehicle compared to your concept, or your project, or your idea. Imagine the car in this case is the idea. Your team's inside of that car, but the only way you can steer a car to change the direction is if you're moving forward. So think about that with your team. Are you being stagnant right now? Are you just planning? Or are you actually taking the steps that you need to for you to have actionable insights and or just some findings that will get you there? So if you don't know anything about a problem space, or you're trying to validate a problem space, do some exploratory research. Go out and actually talk to people. Talk to your clients. Talk to your end users. It'll give you some action. Even if it's not you prototyping or prototyping or whatever concept you're using, it's really important for you to at least start. Just start moving. I read the book Sprint by Jake Knapp. Solve big problems and test new ideas in just five days. I'm gonna go and I'm actually gonna draw out how this is a bias towards action and how it changed the product development cycle from a year or maybe longer to five days. So Jake was a individual that was working for Google and he'd been looking at the sprint cycle and it was taking like a year in order for somebody to launch a new product. And they were having problems because they'll get into the project and they'll plan a whole bunch of things and then they'll pitch it to the senior management and like months have gone by and then they never actually get anywhere. And App was like, you know what? I think this can be done differently. So what he did is, you know, at Google, they get this 20% option where basically 20% of their time they can put towards their own projects. So he put it towards this thing called a design sprint. And he came up with a concept of going from conception all the way to validation in five days with his team. How this action that we can take, this bias towards action could change your team to be able to come up and validate problem spaces, validate prototypes and really go from I don't really know where we're going to, this is exactly where we should, we should go, or we refined it, and we can actually move towards a new product within five days. If you're interested, I'm gonna drop a link in the bio for you to be able to read the design sprint. If you're in the product space, highly recommend reading it. It's one of the best. If you're not, if you're an entrepreneur and you're just fine or stumbled upon this video, still give it a read. It, it, listen to it. It's gonna change the way that you think about addressing problems and product ideas, validating and communicating with your consumer.
if you and your product team aren't moving, you're not moving forward. So have a bias towards action, get out there, be innovative, be the best product manager you can be. You might as well be walking on the sun. Some say that Steve Jobs was one of the most innovative men of our time. Was it the acid? Was it the zeitgeist of the Silicon Valley area? I think not. For the last 36 minutes, I've discovered a key to all of the innovators of our time. The key? The black t-shirt.